Hi, I'm Simon Rushton and this is Taxi Chronicles podcast. On this podcast, we spontaneously interview unsuspecting passengers with their permission, allowing them to share their intimate life stories and concerns. As our slogan states, real riders, real stories. Some riders prefer to be anonymous, while others ask me to tell their story later on. Either way, they are all genuine 5 to 10 minutes stories. So sit back and enjoy this episode. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another episode, another rider and another story. Today we've got a guy, he's from East London or could, maybe he could be from another part of London, but he's definitely a Londoner. He's a nice guy, he's in the music business and in my eyes from what I've heard of him so far, He's the British Dr. Dre, up and coming Dr. Dre, producing beats, and he's gonna tell us all about his extensive year in the music business producing beats. I believe he's produced some number one hits as well. So, you know, for those music fans out there, get your ears peeled and ready to listen and learn his master class, the one and only. Gino. Gino. <laughs> I had to mess up with it. So Gino, tell us what motivates you, how you got into the music business, or I'm not sure if you call it music business, and what's yeah. a typical day like for you in the industry? Uh, well, okay, so how I got into everything was, um, well, I have a friend called Clicks, also known as Kadiata. Uh, he put a program called Logic on my computer a while back and, you Mac. Know, is that Mac? A, a Mac yeah yeah, yeah exactly okay. yeah and he just like he was producing on there and he just told me to kind of get into it really and truly and um, even prior before that my brother tried to get me into it and I was like uh, 12, 13 but I just wanted to play football at the time I was, didn't really care for it yet. so um, it was whatever but then you know I get older become more interested in different things and then from there, I just started my journey uh, from like 17, playing around a bit, 19, playing around a bit, 22, 23, really started to take it seriously. Mm-hmm. Now, um, a couple of years later, I'm starting to establish a name within the industry. Uh, what a day is like, um, I have a calendar that gets given to me by management and they book me in sessions and they just... I just basically have to go there and make a song with whatever artist I'm in there with and make a record basically, a really dope record. So how many years have you been doing this for? Um, I, well I've been taking it seriously from like 23, so I'd say like, <coughs> sorry, five years, Okay. You know what I mean. And it's been paying the rent? Yeah, it's been getting there, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's not too bad. Okay, that's good. So, um, this number one hit. Now, before we get into that, explain what your role is, what you actually do. So, I'm a producer, so I make beats, I sample, and I put drums. Should try and keep your voice at a high. Yeah, your, your voice goes up and down. Yeah, yeah. So I make uh, I make beats, uh, I, um, I sample, so I put drums on records, uh, I put keys on and other little sounds. And um, yeah, we just so I make the record for the artist, and then they go and record it, and then and that's more or less it, to be honest with you. And then um, so the artist yeah. writes the song, and you put the rhythm. Yeah, exactly. So ba- basically, even though the artist is writing words, mm-hmm. you bring it to life with the rhythm. Yeah, so it's almost like I, I give them a canvas, and then from there they 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 do their art. Oh, so you, know you do I mean? your music first. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, you do your music first and then they do the Yeah exactly the writing to yeah, yeah, exactly. how they feel. So they need they need a beat before they can start writing. Well some artists write before they have a beat. They might have an idea of what type of beat they want. So we go ahead and try to get that uh that mm-hmm. idea out for them. But more time um you know, they'll just pick a beat and if they really like it, you know, they'll go in it and then they'll we'll just from there we'll create the song. And then this behind that is just a load of editing, and yeah, there's so much that goes into it. To mm-hmm. be honest with you, 
I understand that. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, have you what have you done? Any famous songs? <laughs> any? F okay. So I, I recently uh, was on an album. There's a guy called Heady One from Tottenham. Um, an amazing album, by the way. Everyone go check it out. It's called Edna. Um, I produced track four, and it recently went number one in the UK charts. So that was really good. I didn't know we still had a UK chart. So yeah. <laughs> it's because is Top of the Pops still around? Uh, I'm not too sure. I don't think so. I remember it being around back then, but I think it's just an official UK charts now. Okay, it's just yeah. that. It's the UK album charts, singles, and then there's film score charts, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, really. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So your music beats is something that can be used in music videos as well? Yes, exactly, yeah. So once the artist creates a song, uh, it depends what they do with the song, what time they go and make a video to the uh, the song. And um, so they could just give their fans a visual, do you know what I mean? How they perceive the video would look like. What do you find harder or easiest, I should say? Um, making the beat for the words or just making the beats? Um... Mm, that's actually a good question, you know. Uh, I would say, probably, I would say making a beat for the artist's lyrics. But it's also, it's fun, because it's creative, because you can go in any direction with it. It's the same with just making a beat, just without words, do you know what I mean? You yeah. don't really have anything to go off of, so you just kind of have to figure out what you're doing on the spot. Yeah. Yeah, so... Do you do you find ever that your your vision gets changed by what the artist produces? Um, yeah. So when you're in the studio, you kind of bounce off the artist. Do you know what I mean? So what would happen is I would usually like create a, a, a beat, and then I would have the artist vocal it, and then I would take back the vocals and then see in what areas I can improve the beat on just to yeah. elevate it and make it sound a bit more, you know, a bit better um, than when we had the beat at its basic stage, you know what I mean? So, yeah, we, we kind of just, like, with the arts, you just bounce back and forth. Okay. You get the vibe going. That's good, that's good. Mm -hmm. So, what have you learnt that you wish you had learnt, that wish you knew, sorry, prior to getting into this industry? Sorry, say that again one more time. What have you learnt mm -hmm. that you wish you had knew? When I was getting into this industry? Yeah. Um, uh, it's definitely all about who you know. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've learnt that you have to have these connections. You can be as talented as can be, but you have to know the right people in order to get into the rooms and you have to have good relationships, business relationships. And, um, but you also do have to have the talent and you have to be hardworking at all of that at the same time. So, yeah, that's basically it really. Yeah, okay. And would you say you need to have a major drive then? Oh, 100%, you definitely have to have a drive. You know, if, you're, if your management calls you at 3 a.m. in the morning and says, you've got a session of X, Y, Z, we've got these two people in the room, you have to come now, you have to get up and you have to go because, you know, it's, it's difficult to get artists in the room sometimes, especially two artists okay. that are never really together and, and put them in one room. So, um, yeah, you definitely um, yeah. have to get up and go <laughs> when you get the call. Would you... Okay, yeah, I hear you. Um, what's the impact you want to have on the world? The impact? Uh, I want to make people feel good with the music I make, really, to be honest. I want to give back, I want to inspire people. I want them, I want, when they hear the songs, just to, for it to just take them somewhere else and so it's just almost an escape. So they don't feel like they are where they are, almost they're somewhere else when they're listening to the music, you know? Okay. What kind of music do you, is it you, you would say you do? 
Uh, so a range of genres I make uh, drill, rap, trap, UK rap, garage, R&B. I dibble and dabble in a bit of everything really. We even made like rock, <laughs> a rock beat before. So it just depends how I feel really. But it's not too bad. Okay, that's good. Mm. What, what what would you say is the future? Your future? Uh, my future. Um, definitely putting people in positions of power and happiness, I guess, and comfortability. That would be my future, and just making sure everyone that's around me is um, in a very nice position. Really, that's mm-hmm. what I want to do. That's great, that's great. It's all about the family. Yeah, it's all about family and making sure people are nice, you know. Yeah, that's so good, that's, that's good. That's the aim for the mm. future. Mm. Would you encourage other people to get into this industry? Uh, yeah, I would. Just, you know, you got to be resilient and you have to be hardworking and you definitely have to have talent and an ear for music. Mm. But um, it is difficult. I would say it is difficult to manoeuvre around. But once you're in and you're familiar with certain situations, you know, I think it's a lot easier to to do what you're doing mm-hmm. in the industry, yeah. Okay. If people want to find you, where can they find you? Uh, well, they can find me on my Instagram, which is prod by Gino, P-R-O-D-B-Y-G-E-N-O. Uh, Twitter is the same. So was that V-Y? P. Oh, P, Papa. Yeah, Papa prod, Yanka. Yeah, prod by Thank Gino, you. produced by Gino. So you can find me on there. Twitter is the same app. Or if you want me on Snapchat, it's just Gino Starlight. Okay. That's where they can find me. That's good. Well, thanks for having coming on here and we wish you well no problem bear me one second we hope you liked that episode keeping in mind we never know who we're going to interview We post twice a day, 8am and 5pm GMT. Have you ever considered the future economies to invest in? Why not listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories? Considering Africa has the fastest growing economies and population on earth and has done for many years, it holds 30% of the world's known natural resources. We publish twice a week. Tuesday with a guest investor and Fridays talking about investment, politics and history, providing a clear understanding for any potential investor.